Ever wonder what to do after you receive your bare root plants from the mail? Hopefully this video can be a guide for you on how to treat bare root plants and how to repot them. Hi everyone, welcome to Feline Jungle. My name is Viona and in this video, I want to show you what I do with my bare root plants that I've received in the mail. I recently imported some plants from Coral Soil, which is a plant seller from Indonesia. In order to pass customs, the plants were shipped bare root. You can check out the video where I did a live unboxing of the 7 plants that I ordered. So what is a bare root plant? Essentially what that means is that the plants are stripped from any soil or growing medium. So you'll have a bare root plant where you can see the leaves and the roots which are usually covered. The first thing you want to do when you receive bare root plants is to prune off any dead leaves or dead roots. Luckily, the Philodendra melanol chrysum that I'm holding right now doesn't have any dead leaves, but it does have some dead roots that we're going to prune off as well. Here I am sanitizing my cutting shears with a wet wipe between each plant to prevent germs from spreading. A lot of plants will lose a leaf or two in transit due to stress. This is completely normal and expected because the plants are growing through so many different factors. They are plucked out of their normal environment, stripped of everything, placed in a box, and then shipped to a foreign country. Imagine if you were a plant. If I was a plant, I'll probably be so stressed that I'll lose some hair due to the stress. Since these plants are shipped bare root, it's also a perfect opportunity to cut off any dead roots. If the roots are soft and mushy, that means they're dead. Some plants just don't do good in transit, like this alocasia. This alocasia cupria looked really good when I first unboxed it. Within a day, the stress of transit is slowly revealing itself. The two older leaves became limp and wilted away. There are also signs of root rot. Overall, it's still in really good condition. It just needs some love and some time. You can also tell that the roots are dead when it turns into this brown color. That means the plant tissue is no longer alive and you can even just pull them off. They kind of feel like overcooked noodles. <laughs> These dead roots and leaves don't add any value to the plant anymore and it can even promote rotting. So you don't have to feel bad when you cut them off. If you saw my unboxing video, you will know that this Philodendron Florida Ghost is absolutely my favorite one out of all of them. I've been searching for a true ghost that has creamy white leaves that will turn green as they mature. This plant right here is so beautiful and is exactly what I was looking for. I'm just picking off some of the tinier roots that turn brown, but overall the roots are very thick and juicy, which means it's healthy. Some of the edges on the leaves also turn brown, so I'm going to just give it a little trim so that the brown edges do not spread. There are a few reasons why a plant seller would sell their plants bare root. Some plant sellers do that to cut shipping costs because soil can be very heavy. In my case, these plants were imported from a foreign country, so they need to be shipped bare root so that the plants can be inspected and verify that they are free from any pests. This last plant you see right here out of the seven plants is a Philodendron Mayoi. I feel like this is the healthiest one out of all of them. The leaf is nice and big with no signs of stress and has a really healthy root system. I like this plant because of the shapes of the leaves and the red vein in the back of the leaf was a really nice surprise for me. I just published a blog post about things I wish I knew before buying plants from Indonesia. If you want to learn more about that, you can visit my website at feelingjungle.com. 
I bet many of you don't even know I have a blog. Yes, it's something new that I'm trying to stay on top of. So go check it out. For the second step, we're going to clean off the leaves. You can see that there's a lot of hard water stains. My theory is that these stains are from all the chemicals they use to sterilize the plants. I like to use this mixture of vinegar and water to get rid of these stains. I just eyeball a pint of water with a tablespoon of vinegar. I usually use white vinegar. In this case, I only have rice vinegar, so it just works the same way. Reusing the wet wipe from before, I'm just going to wipe off each plant starting with the syngonium elbow. I find this process to be really relaxing and I really get a good look at the plants. This is a good time for you to look for any pests that might have slipped past inspection. I have had imports where I found dead scales on the leaves before, so it's always a good thing to just give them a closer inspection. This time I did not find any bugs on them. When I'm done wiping off the leaves, I like to give the plants a good rinse underwater just to get rid of that vinegar and anything else that might be on the plants. Step number three, you want to soak the roots in water. This will help the roots absorb the moisture. This is a critical step that people often miss. By soaking them in water, you are helping them get hydrated after being shipped in a box for however many days. You want to soak them in water for a minimum of three hours. I tend to do it for a day or two, but not any longer than that because you don't want the risk of the roots rotting. For this step, I just use whatever extra cups or jars that I have lying around the house. My cat thing right here is my trusty plant inspector. He's here to make sure the plants have the best quality of water. Honestly, this is just tap water from my sink. I'm 
I'm soaking these plants for a day. In the meantime, I'm keeping the plants out of direct light. You don't want to stress them out even more. This spot here is perfect because they get indirect bright light. If you want to buy some plants from Chlorosoil, don't forget to use my discount code CHLORALXFELINE for 5% off your order. Save a few bucks for more plants. This is one day later. Check on your plants to see if they're hydrated. If they are, then it's finally time to repot them. I am repotting plants in different medium depending on the conditions of the roots. This is Ponds, which is a rocky planting mixture that substitutes soil. This is my first time using it and I've heard many good things about this from you guys. Some of the benefits is less root rot and more root growth due to the better air circulation. It's very similar to Lekka and here I'm just rinsing it off with water. Just getting my plant tools ready here. Most of these tools and plant products can be found on my Amazon shop, except for this plant tarp by my friend Phoebe and this soil scoop from RT1 Home. What are some of your favorite plant tools that you can't live without? For me, I think it's my watering can just because I like to water my plants so much. <laughs> Another medium that I'm going to be using to repot my plants is sphagnum moss, which I am very familiar with using before. It's really good for rooting plants and it also helps retain the moisture. I think this would be a good medium to use for my alocasia cupria, which seems to need some extra care with root growth and also to keep the humidity level higher. I don't have any experience with these kinds of alocasias before. They have really cool leaves, but I also heard that they get spider mites a lot, which is why I've been avoiding them. I really couldn't resist this one because of its beautiful metallic leaves. They look even cooler in person. If you have any tips and suggestions, please leave it in the comments below.
next up, I'm repotting my anthurium silver blush in ponds. In my experience, anthuriums do really good in semi-hydro. I have an anthurium clarinovium that I grew in soil and it did nothing for me for a year. I switched it to Leca a month ago and now I got my first leaf and it's even flowering for me right now. So I just want to try growing this anthurium in ponds to see how it does. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm also repotting my Syngonium Albo in ponds just because I have an extra self watering pot that I got from Amazon and I have leftover ponds. I feel like this will do really great in ponds, the roots are in really good condition and hopefully it will grow even more in this rocky substrate. I'm actually really tempted to cut this Syngonium because it has excellent aerial roots on the top node. Maybe I'll do it in the future, but right now I don't want to give it more stress by cutting it up. This Philodendron Florida Ghost is the first one I'm potting in soil because I feel like it's in excellent condition. It has minimal damage on the leaves and it has a really good root system with primary and secondary roots. In my experience, Philodendrons bounce back really quick after being shipped and I hope I'm right and it will give me new growth because this is my favorite one. Same thing for my philodendron mayowai, I feel very confident that it'll do good in soil. I'm using my own soil mix, if you're interested in that you can check out my video on how to DIY the perfect soil mix. The mayowai was actually the cheapest plant out of the bunch. It was only $20 and it's funny how it's the biggest and healthiest one. I'm also repotting my variegated Epiprenum pinnatum in soil. I hope I'm saying that right. This plant has really good roots with no signs of stress, so I feel really confident that it will take off in soil. This is a juvenile version, and it gets really pretty when it matures. It actually develops splits like the Monstera. This was only 40 bucks on their website. If you're dreaming about a Monstera album but you don't want to spend the money on it, then I highly recommend this plant. It's so underrated and it's just as beautiful. 
The last plant we're repotting today is this Philodendron Melanocrasum. I would say this is the problem child out of the bunch. The roots did not look so good, it had very little roots, and I sense that the lower leaf is going to turn yellow and the newest leaf might actually rot off. I decided that I'll keep it in sphagnum moss just because it will encourage root growth and I'll probably keep a close eye on this one. I heard they don't do really well in transit. We just successfully repotted all our bare root plants, just some general tips and things to expect. I would still isolate them from the rest of your plants just in case there's any pest. You don't want to spread anything into your existing collection. Find them a sunny spot with indirect light. Don't move them around too much, they need time to adjust to their environment. Moving them around will just cause more stress. It's also going to take some time for these plants to acclimate to your home. This can take weeks or months before they can give you any new growth. Creating a greenhouse environment will probably make them bounce back faster. Recreating something that is similar to their native environment will make them feel right at home. You can do this by bagging up your plants in plastic bags to increase the humidity, or you can set up one of those IKEA greenhouse cabinets. Just be patient and watch them grow. Hope this video helps you and your new plant babies. Thank you for repotting my plants with me. If you found this video helpful and valuable, don't forget my 10 second challenge to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Thank you so much and see you guys next week.